Hey, what's up you guys? It's Dorothy and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we are going to go into part one of chapter 26 of One of Us is Lying. Um, we are just now finding out that Nate's been arrested for Simon's murder, but Broen is trying to stick up for him. So let's get right into this and see if Broen can actually save him from these accusations. This video may contain sensitive topics and foul language. If you do not wish to continue, please click off of the video now. You have been warned. Broen, Sunday, November 4th, 10 a.m. We're quite the crew when at the Until Proven office this Sunday morning, me, Mrs. McCauley, and my mom, who was willing to let me go but not unsupervised, the small, sparsely furnished space is overflowing with each desk holding at least two people. Everyone's either talking or gently on the phone or pounding away on some computer, sometimes both, busy for a Sunday. I comment as Eli leads us into a tiny room crammed with a small table and chairs. Eli's hair seems to have grown three inches since he was on Mike Hellpower's Investigates, all of it upward. He runs a hand through the mad scientist curls and sends them even higher. Is it Sunday already? There aren't enough chairs, so I sit on the floor. Sorry, Eli says. We can make this quick. First off, Mrs. McCauley, I'm sorry about your son's arrest. I understand he's be being remanded to a juvenile detention center instead of an adult facility, which is good news. As I told Broen, there's not much I can do given my current workload, but if you're willing to share whatever information you have, I'll do what I can and provide suggestions and maybe a referral. Mrs. McCauley looks exhausted, but like she's made an effort to dress up a little in navy pants and a lumpy gray cardigan. My own mother is in her usual effortless chic in leggings, tall boots, a cashmere sweater coat, and subtly patterned infinity scarf. The two of them couldn't be more different, and Mrs. McCauley tugs at the frayed hem of her sweater as though she knows it. Well, here's what I've been told, she says. The school received a call that Nate had drugs on his locker. From whom? Eli asked, scribbling on a yellow notepad. They wouldn't say. I think it was anonymous, but they went ahead and removed his lock Friday after school to check. They didn't find any drugs, but they did find a bag with Simon's water bottle and EpiPen, and all the EpiPens from the nurse's office went missing the day he died. I run my fingers along the rough fiber of the rug, thinking all of the times Addie's been questioned about those EpiPens. Cooper, too. They've been hanging over our heads for weeks. There's no way even Nate, if Nate were actually guilty of something, that he'd be dumb enough to leave them sitting in his locker. Ah, uh, Eli's voice comes out like a sigh, but his head straight stays bent over his legal pad. So the police got involved as they got a warrant to search the house Saturday morning. Mrs. McCauley continues, and they found a computer in Nate's closet with this journal, I guess they're calling it, and those Tumblr posts have been popping up everywhere since Simon died. I raise my eyes to catch my mother staring at me, a kind of disturbed pity crawling across her face. I hold her gaze and shake my head. I don't believe any of it. Ah, uh, Eli says again, this time he does look up, but his face remains calm and neutral. Any fingerprints? No, Mrs. McCauley says, and I exhale quietly. What does Nate say about all of this? Eli asks that he has no idea how any of these things got into his locker or the house, Mrs. McCauley says. Okay, Eli says, and Nate's locker hadn't been searched before this. I don't know, Mrs. McCauley admits, and Eli looks at me. It was, I recall. Nate says he was searched the first day the question, they questioned us, his locker and his house. The police came with dogs and everything looking for drugs. They didn't find any. I add hastily with a sideways glance at my mother before I turned back to Eli, but nobody found Simon's things or a computer then. Is your house typically locked, Eli? asked Mrs. McCauley. It's never locked, she replies. I don't think the door even has a lock anymore. Huh, Eli mutters, scribbling on his pad again. There's something else, Mrs. McCauley says. And her voice wavers. The district attorney wants Nate moved to a regular prison. They're saying he's too dangerous to be in, juve in a juvenile center. A chasm cracks open in my chest as Eli sits bolt upright. It's the first time he's dropped his own impartial lawyer mask and shown some emotions and the horror on his face test terrifies me oh no 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 that would be a fucking disaster excuse my language what's his lawyer doing to stop that we haven't met him yet mrs mccauley sounds near to tears someone's been appointed but they haven't been in touch eli drops his pen with a frustrated grunt possession of simon's things isn't great not great at all people have been convicted on less but the way they got this evidence i don't like it anonymous tips things that weren't there before conveniently showing up now in places that aren't hard to access combination locks are pretty easy to pick 
and if the DA is talking about sending Nate to a federal prison at the age of 17, any lawyer worth a damn should be blocking the hell out of that. He rubs a hand across his face and scowls at me. Damn it, Berwin, this is your fault. Everything Eli's been saying has been making me more and more sick except this. No, I'm confused. What did I do? I protest. You brought this case to my attention and now I have to take it. And I do not have time, but whatever. This assume, That's assuming you're open to... A change in counsel, Mrs. McCauley? Oh, thank God. The relief surging through me makes me limp and, and almost dizzy. Mrs. McCauley nods vigorously and Eli sighs. I can help, I say eagerly. We've been looking into... I'm about to tell Eli about the red Camaro, but he holds his hand up with a forbidding expression. Stop right there, Rowan. If I'm going to represent Nate, I can't speak with other represented people in this case. It could get me disbarred and put you at risk of implication. In fact, you need... You need you and your mother to leave so I can work out some details with Mrs. McCauley, but <coughs> I look helplessly at my mother who's nodding and getting to her feet, securing her handbag over her shoulder with an air of fin finality. He's right, Berlin. You need to leave things with Mrs. Kleinfeder and Mrs. McCauley. Her expression softens as she meets Mrs. McCauley's eyes. I wish you the best of luck with all of this. Thank you, Mrs. McCauley says, and thank you, Berlin. I should feel good. Mission accomplished, but I don't. Eli doesn't have ha know half of what we do, and now I am supposed to tell him. Uh, and now, how am I supposed to tell him? That is the end of part one to chapter twenty-six. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.